This is SAT 105, Unit 4, Water Quality, Part 2. In that water, not only chemicals will be in there, but we can have other types of organisms. We can have coliform bacteria, all the way up to salmonella, and even worms and viruses in there. All of these need to be tested for, and all need to be removed uh, before they are fit for human consumption. Other pollutions that are out there, we can have tankers, which crash upon the shore. They can leave oil behind. They can leave uh, anything that they in their hold, gasoline, anything can be put into the water, driven up onto the shore, and taken into our water system. A large amount of trash and garbage are washed out into our streams. And they're into our streams, they can be gradually moved until they are into our oceans and seas. We have to be careful of other discharges. Our plants we may be discharging ammonia into them. We may have fertilizers which are being dropped into the water. Any plant that was near a river in the past used to discharge their garbage right into that river. We now stop that. We have to worry about just dirt itself. For example, silt running off of construction sites into the water. All these need to be watched to be sure they're not causing problems. We have seen in the North Pacific, garbage has gradually increased because we have a huge amount of the Great Pacific Garbage Pit. The currents that are there have pushed everything to very close to Hawaii. And we're talking about a large area where there is a large amount of floating plastic. Uh, the plastic is just not being removed enough by the earth. The plastic can be removed, but it takes thousands of years. And this is just floating upon the ocean. We have a huge area here where the currents have pushed all of our garbage. Other types of pollution are thermal pollution. Thermal pollution by plants uh, left their hot water, even though it's clean, being pushed back out into the river. Now this changes the area of uh, oxygen that may be there. It may change the area of carbon dioxide being there. So what happens is that we have a different type of fish in the area. The old fish move out, the new fish move in. The plants change. We're already seeing this in Long Island Sound. Fish that used to be closer to the edges, fish that used to be in deeper water are leaving. We're populating the whole Long Island Sound with new fishes now that we have global warming. Other pollutants that are on there are detergents. We have now stopped using special detergents in our dishwashers because as this got into our water system, it was not cleaned out. It was gradually moved into the rivers and streams and back to the oceans. The food processing way, insecticides, herbicides, hydrocarbons. We used to just dump our tree and bush debris from logging operations. All these things on the list were dumped to the water. We now have many more laws and regulations to stop this, which we will investigate in another unit. What can we do? We have to have a multi-barrier approach. We have to reduce the contamination from the water source to when it comes out of our tap. We have to protect where this comes from. We have to protect how the water gets from that area to ourselves. 
We have to have plans to monitor all of these areas. We have water sensitive urban design. Well, in the cities, how do we deal with our water every time it rains? Remember, we have all that concrete. We have less and less earth for the water to be absorbed in. How do we get that out of the cities safely back into the rivers and streams? How do we stop it from taking the pollutants off the concrete and asphalt and moving it into the water systems? We do have a variety of ways, and we can protect ourselves. We can protect those creeks, rivers, and wetlands in the cities. We can take all our drainage that is coming out of our drains and our sewers and protect it. We can examine it. We can change the bacteria pump that is in there. We can get rid of the mercury. We can get rid of the other heavy metals that may be in there. We also don't have to use the same amount of protection if, for example, we're giving it back to a golf course. We don't have to do some of the final steps to get rid of some of the snow. We can just clean it so there's no more bacteria, fungus, algae, heavy metals into it and put it back right onto the golf courses. We have to have a buy-in from people, though. We have to be able to use that water in a more efficient way. Here's a building where they have a wind turbine to get themselves energy. They use solar power to get the water harder. The water that comes from sinks, the water that comes from Toilets can be filtered out and then reused again. Stormwater can be reused again without having to clean it up as much if we protect it initially. We have to focus on some long-term planning here to protect ourselves in the future. Many cities are starting this already. Here is a boardwalk in the San Marcos, Texas. This boardwalk is across the wetlands. These wetlands are using Mother Earth to purify the water. It controls the floods and it stabilizes the whole area of the riverbank. We're utilizing plants here. We already know that we can use plants to remove some of the metals. So you can use spinach plants, harvest spinach, and remove zinc uh, from the ground. We have areas called riparian buffers. There is one that was established uh, in 1990 where we started to plant more bushes and shrubs and trees. We allowed the river to flow in a more efficient fashion. And you can see here, there's been a change. The trees are getting bigger. The bushes are getting bigger. The grasses are getting bigger. Our native plants that were there are helping clean up the water. The nitrate levels are reduced, the erosion is reduced, and the, the wildlife are coming back into the area. Just one way we can do this. Uh, we have bioretention basins. We use plants and trees to filter the water. They take the nitrogen, phosphorus, and find particulates in the runoff. Here's a little rain garden. This is early age. It's got mulch on there. And as rain comes into this area, it allows it to be absorbed into the earth. And the plants then will take away some of the pollutants. This is a sediment basin. Where as it rains, this fills up with water. And at the very bottom of it, the sediment dries up. It can be removed later on. There's two swales uh, for a housing development. Uh, the one in the background has been well developed so that as the water comes down in there, it's slowed down by the earth, it's slowed down by the plants, giving time for it to settle back into the earth, and giving time for the plants to remove the pollutants that may be in there. In the foreground, it's just being established. What you see on there is a, a fabric to hold the earth in place why seeds are started and why bushes and trees are started. We have sand filters. 
uh, just a big in cities where all we have to do is take our water, pass it through the sand, and that can get rid of uh, pollutants and bacteria in the country. We used to keep sand filters, which is a combination of debris from plants along with sand. This treats pollutants to water, and as it passes through here, it's cleaned up, and we don't have to uh, give it as much of a treatment. Uh, in Chicago, they're using removal paving. Uh, this is a type of paving that allows the water to percolate down through the bricks here. What happens is that new bricks are used in alleys here in Chicago. And instead of going down a foot, they end up going down two feet. You're filling that with sand and gravel and these types of pavers, which allow water to go through them. On the right, it's a different type of paver. It's filled with uh, grass so that as you drive upon this, you, you don't sink down. But as the water comes upon it, it allows the water to pass through into the deeper areas. Chicago has a deep tunnel project that takes our stormwater and holds that. In Chicago in the past, when we had a large amount of rain, uh, this would overflow the whole system, and that overflow of system would then go out into Lake Michigan and pollute the lake. And now we're allowed to divert some of the stormwaters into our deep tunnel. Cities now can have uh, swales along the side of their streets. Here's one in Seattle. Uh, it has plants. You can see how it is dropped down the center. So as it rains, the water fills this area and slowly percolates out. The plants then help remove uh, the contaminants that are inside of them. It's called a rain guard. Uh, rain guards also provide effective stormwater management. Water again passes into this area where it's held by the plant and the earth, and then the filter water gradually flows into a stormwater drain. A percolation trench. There's another one where, in this case here, uh, rocks are also utilized in different sizes to allow the water to slowly percolate down into a system, um, and it can be passed into the riverways after this. 